What is going on guys? In this video, we're going to go over my solo Magic Templar PvP build for Battlegrounds in the Flames of Ambition patch. So when Flames of Ambition first released, everyone and their mother was in no proc PvP in Cyrodiil. While that was fun when it first released, Zergs became ever so prevalent. If you went into lag hosts, it was just lag and Zergs. If you went into black reach, it was just people that you knew and, you know, people who just wanted to 1v1. So I decided to give Battlegrounds a try and let me tell you, BGs have felt amazing. They legit have never felt better in any other patch. All I can really say about Magic Templar, it is legit sweeping the competition off their feet, no pun intended. So this build has it all. It has good healing, it has a good sustain, but most of all, it has some amazing damage. This build, I actually created a new word. Um, this build bleeds people. It's called, it's a mix between bursted and deleted. It's called bleeded. Anyways, so the damage on this spec is absolutely amazing. This Magic Templar has honestly never felt this bursty um, in a long, long time. While many people, you know, previously proc sets, proc sets, proc sets and BGs, I don't really think that's the case much anymore. Uh, they aren't near as strong as they used to be. Now they are still potent. Um, but I think people die so fast to the overall damage meta that we're in that proc sets really are a waste. Like, you have to apply all of your dots on them, you know, to proc the Vatron staff. You have to hopefully proc, proc on, And by that time, they're pretty much dead anyways. So, it's like, why not buff your damage, you know, raw rather than having to, you know, use proc sets. And that is where I think that, you know, one of the Xers really enjoy this patch because, you know, proc sets are so good, but... They aren't nearly as potent as they once were. I think with the overall effectiveness of the CP system being reduced, Battlegrounds and, no and Imperial City PvP really can provide a glimpse about what Cyrodiil will be like in the upcoming months when proc sets are re-enabled. And honestly, I think it looks very, very bright. So with that intro out of the way, let's get into the build. So, my race, I'm a Breton. This is my favorite race from Magic Templar. You definitely want to go Breton, in my personal opinion. The cost reduction is just so so nice. Um, we are running a little bit more heavy armor pieces, so the cost of our skills has, has gone up. Um, but the 7% cost reduction on Breton is just too good. Other races, Argonian, you can maybe even try an Imperial. Um, I've done a race tier list if you guys want to check that video out. Um, but I honestly prefer for Magic Templar, a Breton. High Elf is probably decent as well. You'll have more damage, but the 7% cost reduction is just very, very strong. Mundestone wise, we are using the Atronach. I think this is my personally the best Mundestone, especially for uh, no CP. Um, in my food, I'm using Bewitch Sugar Skulls. And for my attribute points, I have all points into magic. So for my gear, we are using five pieces of stone. If you're not using this on a Magic Templar, you need to get your head out of your butt and put this on your character. Toppling Charge procs this, and this is so good. My favorite set in the game right now. This gives, I, I swear this gives the most damage out of any set in the game. Uh, we get 5,250 penetration on the five piece plus the three piece. We get two things of, of spell damage and weapon damage. So this is very versatile between magic and stamina. Uh, this is just an overall very, very strong set. Um, we get so much penetration from this build, it's not even funny. On the back bar, we're using Daedric Trickery. Uh, this is, again, one of my favorite sets in the game. Uh, this provides a lot of buffs uh, that Templar really lacks. They really don't get any of these. This helps their overall tankiness. This gives them more healing power, gives them speed, uh, oftentimes. Uh, and this is just, again, one of my favorite utility sets that uh, this stacks very, very well on a Templar. Give, you get the minor versions of some of these, but you don't get the major buffs. You get the minor, like you get like minor protection from jabs, you get minor mending from using, uh, restoring line abilities. Uh, and so this really, really helps and those stack on top of each other. For my monster set, I'm using a 2 piece Engine Guardian. This is my favorite set uh, for Magic Templar. This is just so good. Not only does it give you resources, it can take damage for you, and people oftentimes will hit this instead of you, so it provides a little bit of tankiness from that regard. But the extra sustain this provides is just so nice. Um, it procs very, very often, and it's just such a good set. Uh, I'm using a one-piece trainee and a one-piece Malakath. So that is all for the gear. Let's go over traits, and let's go more in depth. So I'm using a Stoon Maul, Sharpen Trait, Shock Damage, Enchant. So 
Um, just sitting here right right now, without student proc at all, we have 11.8k spell penetration. As you'll see right here, 11,802. That is obnoxious, okay? That That is just absolutely crazy. The reason why we have so much pen is for those who aren't aware, this is the main reason why we're using a maul. Maces increases your armor penetration by 3,300, okay? So this is almost as good as Major Breach, okay? Now it's definitely not as good because Major Breach gives 6,000 and the Mace gives 3,300. It's a little bit over half, right? But what this allows us to do is we get the penetration and we don't have Elemental Drain on our build. So this gives us penetration and we get more bar space. This overall, in my opinion, personally is the best. Uh, with the added status effects that have came out where whenever you deal magic damage you can proc the minor magic of steel uh, which all of our damage is magic so we're going to be procing that often elemental drain has became obsolete in my opinion we get over half the extra penetration so we get more bar space we get almost as much penetration um, and it's just overall better in my personal opinion so this is why i prefer the mace over the lightning staff uh, if if you were to use a staff you could use lightning but at that point, um, you're going to lose that on some penetration, which I think is very, very crucial. Um, and you won't have enough room for weakness elements, in my opinion. So this is why I run the 2H. Um, so Sharpen, Shock Damage Enchant, best in my opinion, uh, at least for magic builds. I even like this for my Stamina Templar. Uh, I'll be doing a build video about that here soon. Um, so Day to Trickery, we are running Defending. And weapon damage enchant. You can run poisons here if you'd like. Uh, you can use double dot. You can use, I mean, the crown sword poisons are fine. Um, but I like the weapon and spell damage uh, buff. Um, defending trait, I think, is the best this patch to give us a little bit more tankiness. Um, I do have a powered one here. Um, but I, I think I just like the defending. I think it's just better. I mean, we get... Um, we get... You know, in our rune, we have 25k physical resistance and 33k spell. Outside of the rune, we have 29k spell and 22k physical. So this really provides a lot of tankiness. Um, and I really, really like it. So for traits and enchantments on my gear, I have a Divine's Head. I would like this to be reinforced or an pen, um, but I don't want to trait change this right now. I don't want to waste the 50 crystals. Um, for my chest, I have reinforced. And for my legs, I have reinforced. Everything else is impenetrable trait. Um, you definitely want to have a little bit of impen for no CP. Because you can't get any extra impen from the CP system. So enchant wise we are using tri-stack glyphs on the big pieces. The head, chest, and legs. And the magicka glyphs on the small pieces. So for the jewelry we have one arcane, one infuse, and one triune. Uh, I have triune on this Malakath ring because I want to be able to use this on multiple classes. Um, you could use this infuse. You can use this arcane. Uh, arcane will probably be probably be the best in my opinion, um, but that's just me. So for enchants, I have recovery, spell damage, and recovery. I think this is the best in slot for me personally. I forgot to mention we are using three heavy and four light. Um, the reason why we can do this is because they again they changed some things. So. The longer Prodigy or Concentration gives you, you, you don't have to no longer have five pieces to be able to get this to be activated. This applies per piece of gear. This applies to heavy armor as well. So we get 2% health per piece of heavy armor gear. We get a 4% increase uh, resource restore from our heavy attacks per heavy armor piece. So you can legit run three light, three heavy, one medium. You could run, you know, four light, three heavy you could run four heavy three light it's really up to you and your play style and your build um but i prefer four light and three heavy to give me some tankiness and give me the damage and penetration from light armor um i i really like this and i think it's really really good so let me go buff up here real fast show you guys the stats so i'm just gonna hit uh solar barrage hit my degeneration so we got 4k spell damage very very good stats here um, let's go, let's hit my, this thing, this thing, let's proc my Stoon now. Stoon, we have 17,000 penetration. 17,000. Um, but this makes it to where you don't overpin on people, right? And that's very, very crucial for PvP in my opinion. 
um, because you don't want to go too far into something because if you do you're really gonna lose the benefit from it so this is 17k pen it's plenty enough so if somebody uses major breach on someone and procs the debuff then you know great even more penetration for us but we really don't need it and if it does proc then great you know they'll basically have no armor at that point but uh, this provides the most bang for your buck, in my opinion, to give you the most broad amount of you know, damage. So let me fully buff up here with a potion and everything. So degeneration, solar barrage, potion. We're not going to do a light attack buff. So we have almost 2k magic recovery, 4k spell damage. Now let me light attack buff. Light attack buff, we have 4.4k spell damage. Just crazy amount of stats. Um, I really, really just, just love this Templar. All right, the sustain feels great on this build too, um, with our rune focus and engine guardian, the cost reduction, the recovery. We never really run out of resources. So let me scoot back here now that you guys seen the stats. So let me go into skills and let me provide an in depth, you know, look at them and really explain what's going on here and why we deal so much damage. So for skills on the front bar, we're using puncturing sweeps. Uh, this skill just slaps so hard and I really don't even think it's the skill in general that hits very very hard I think it's just everything adding to the damage Solar barrage helps. So next we have solar barrage. Uh, this skill is just so nasty um, The aoe damage is not too shabby. I really think it's strong um, But what people really overlook about this skill is the empowerment. So if we go over here and look let me let me show you guys real fast so we're not empowered. Um, we're not going to get empowered yet. Let me show you this real fast. So if we light attack this guy right here, 3.4k. Okay, so little barrage hits. 4.8. So 3.4k to 4.8. So we're getting, I guess, a 12, 1300 damage increase for just having solar barrage. So as you guys seen there, how much damage we had from Solar Barrage. I mean, it was a 3.4k without without uh, the Empower, and then we went up to 4.8k with just putting the Empowerment up. That's not increasing, you know, our spell damage or anything like that, really. Um, so just the Empowerment is just so overlooked. It doesn't matter if you're using a two-handed melee weapon or if you're using a Staff. The lot attack damage will be the same. Uh, and I think that's what a lot of not a lot and I think not a lot of people realize that. And that's why the 2H is just so powerful in my opinion. Uh, and not only because of some of the passives as well. But we'll go into that here in a minute. So next we have Degeneration. Spell damage buff and a dot. It's pretty simple. I wish this skill gave more. But uh, it is what it is. So topping charge. This skill is just very very good. It's a gap closer. It's your main CC. It procs your stun. It puts you in position to do other skills like sweeps. And your ultimate. Overall, this is just my favorite skill in the game. I use this on my Stamina Templar. People overlook this skill so hard. It deals decent damage too, um, and it really provides a, a low-key thing that not a lot of people realize uh, about the Age of Spear abilities. Radiant Impression, this skill is just so good. This skill secures kills when people get low. You definitely need that this patch. It costs almost nothing. It does so much damage, um, and it's definitely <laughs> one of the strongest skills in the game. And I think this is what really encompasses Magplor and makes it so strong. For my ultimate, we have Crescent Sweep. I love this ultimate so much. If you don't use this ultimate on a Magic Templar, you're higher than a kite. Um, even on a Stamina Templar, I love this ultimate. This ultimate is just so good. So Crescent Sweep will legit remove people's hairline. It'll make them look like LeBron James. Uh, <laughs> it just completely um, nuke people, right? So the reason why these skills do so much damage isn't necessarily the damage themselves. Let me go into a few passives here. Burning Light. This was actually buffed um, a few patches ago and people called it a nerf. And including me, uh, whenever I had taken a break and came back to the game, I was like, oh, what happened to the random chance to proc Burning Light? So the Burning Light procs whenever you hit somebody with an Aedric Spear ability four times in rapid succession, right? So if you use just puncturing sweeps, it hits four times. So one, two, three, four, right? So if you were to puncturing sweep somebody, every single time you hit puncturing sweeps, you're procking burning light, okay? So what this means is, is if you top and charge into a crescent sweep, crescent sweep ticks in an AOE around you, 
all right so if you have the crescent sweep radiating you have the toppling charge that you just proc so that's one skill you have the crescent sweep that's two skills and then you go into sleeps right after that you're going to proc burning light two times in one rotation and that is where all the damage comes from so we have obviously these skills do damage in general and then you have the burning light uh ticking on people that deals 3810 magic damage to your target another thing that is very overlooked on templar is the minor protection so with daisy trickery up on our back bar we are getting major and minor protection pretty consistently obviously if it procs so we'll get 10 percent damage mitigation from the protection we'll also get five percent from the age of Experience ability so we'll have 15 percent damage reduction so we'll be doing pretty good for our, our overall tankiness also we get the uh minor sorcery from using solar barrage radiant oppression so we definitely get a lot of spell damage on this spec this way at like 4.4k spell damage templar definitely has one of the highest amounts of spell damage in the game uh, just just simply put that passive alone so let's check out my back bar rapid regeneration this skill is so strong if you're not using a resto staff on a magpar you need to really try it what happens with Magplar is they get pigeonholed and they just basically just start spamming Honor the Dead. Um, you know, trying to get rid of snares, you know, hitting their cleanse. Uh, but Rapid Regen is really all that they need, okay? This provides healing over time, um, so you can go offensive, right? And that's the biggest thing, you know, not getting pigeonholed, you know, hitting this and then going right into offensive. You have some of the healing over time. I mean, obviously your puncturing sweeps heal you a little bit. Not as much as you would really like them to, but they do heal you some. So if you have the rapid regeneration that can, and you know, the cleanse, you're really good. Like you don't need a lot more healing than that other than when you need a burst heal from your honor the dead. Next, we have a given extended ritual, run the skill, the skill removes negative effects, heals in an area of effects, provides a purge to your allies, and it's just so good. Also this, I think, uh, yeah, increases the amount of damage you can block by 10%. Um, it's just so nice and also again with the data trickery we have major mending so we have a 16 percent heal increase and then uh, the minor mending gives us eight percent healing into increase so we're getting a lot of healing on the spec um to give us a lot of tankiness honor the dead this is your main burst heal this provides a lot of sustain as well restoring 80 percent of the ability's cost every two seconds over six seconds as magic this is very very strong we get a ton of magic back from this uh, and also with our channel focus uh, this gives us armor buff this gives us 240 recovery every one second so this equates to 480 magic recovery uh this skill will return its cost of its value after uh, six seconds um and you basically everything else is free so uh, this skill is just so amazing it gives you minor mending uh increases again the amount of damage you can block by 10 percent uh, just overall just so good next we have race against time you don't want to be spamming cleanse constantly trying to get removed of snares you want to have a snare removal uh, i understand this doesn't give us the critical damage because we are using malakath but this provides us with major expedition and snare removal which is very very crucial for magic build it provides some maneuverability uh we, when we have top charge and race against time i do not feel slow at all um i feel just fine i feel fast on a magic build um then other specs like you know like a, a spell caster that is very very slow um but this magic templar feels very very good back bar ultimate i'm using barrier i don't actually use it ultimate all at all i use this for a little bit of magic recovery so as you see here we have 1663 we have 1558 so the reason why we get the recovery is from our uh support passive 10 percent recovery it's nice to have um you can use other ultimates back here if you like if you want to use rest all if you want to use the nova rite of passage really whatever you want but that is all for the skills so let me explain why I prefer two-handed over dual wield. So regardless, we get the same amount of of the extra, you know, penetration. If you were using two maces or if you're using a 2H mace, it's going to be the exact same if you're using two swords. It'll be the exact same if you're using a great sword. So that is really irrelevant to the fact about whichever, you know, weapon choice you pick. The main reason why is the battle rush getting 30 percent stamina recovery after killing your target so this is also an okay passive again this does not require you you to use a 2h ability this requires it to be equipped so we increase our damage of our next direct damage attack by 10 percent after we have the attack it's okay we don't use any 2h ability so we really don't need this um, and that's really all the passives that we really 
a benefit from. Dual wield gets nothing. The only thing dual wield will get will be the offhand weapon damage, which does increase your spell damage, but um, it doesn't give you any extra sustain. The Rufian, see, the Rufian passive only applies to dual wield attacks. Um, the offhand weapon damage really isn't that noticeable, um, in my personal opinion. Now, the only reason why you'd maybe you want to use dual wield is to use blade cloak, okay? That'd be th the only reason. But as you can see here, we don't have enough bar space in that regard anyways. So, this is why I prefer it. And even if you were to use dual wield, um, you would have to drop raise against time. And I don't think that is worth it in my honest opinion. So, let me explain why I use the resto staff. So, whenever you fully charge heavy attack somebody with the resto staff, you get 30% more resources, okay? So, if we add in our heavy armor passes that we get as well, giving us... 12% increased resource restore if we knock somebody off balance we get even more resource restore So this is why this is so powerful to give you a lot of sustain even though the sustain we have is plenty enough Anyways, if you have to heavy attack with the rest of those staff You're gonna get so many resources back if you obviously knock them off balance You'll get a little bit less if they aren't this is really low-key and it really goes unseen on the build And it's just very very powerful that maybe not a lot of people will realize so that is it for the build guys uh, I did not go over the champion point system because we don't need to. This is for no CP PvP. If you guys want to watch some footage of this build in action, you guys can watch my Magic Templar Battleground commentary. I'm going to be posting more content of Magic Templar over the next few days and weeks. So be on the lookout for that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.